Okay, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. We are going to go ahead and get things started. Um, welcome to uh, the, uh, uh, the next or the, this next installment of our Parent Town Hall series. We are glad to be here uh, with you all in this uh, virtual space. Um, for those of you all who don't know me, I am Charles Jefferson, the Director of Marketing and Communications here at Holy Trinity High School. Um, we are keeping it all in the family tonight. Uh, everybody that you see here on the screen um, are familiar faces that um, you have interacted with um, at some point. Um, I'll go ahead and just introduce um, uh, folks uh, just for those of you who may be new and you know may not be as familiar. So I'm going to start from my left and then go over right. Uh, we have our assistant principal, Mrs. Nara Mahone, who's here with us tonight. Uh, our school dean, Dr. Beneda Baker. Um, of course, our uh, school president, Mr. Tim Bach. Our chief operating officer, uh, Mr. John Malloy. Our school principal, uh, Dr. Quincy Payton, and our director of technology, uh, Mr. Uh, Jonathan uh, Tarazzi. Um, a couple of housekeeping. Um, this meeting is being recorded and will be posted on our YouTube channel um, uh, by the end of the week. Um, so you can watch this on demand, on demand if you uh, need to watch this again, or for those individuals who may not uh, have been able to make tonight. Uh, so this will be available on our YouTube channel. Uh, just search. Uh, Holy Trinity High School or Holy Trinity CHI. Um, I'll put that in the uh, chat box for those um, uh, who uh, will need that link. Um, we also have our Parents of Holy Trinity Facebook group. If you're not a member of that, uh, we do encourage you to join that um, as we post updates regularly in that group. And then you'll be able to uh, confer, converse and chat uh, with other parents um, at Holy Trinity uh, as well. Uh, we do have a full agenda tonight. so. Uh, I'll stop with uh, words of preliminary and I'll go ahead and turn it over to our president, uh, Mr. Tim Bopp, who is going to welcome us uh, with some prayer. And he's also going to talk to us about um, our uh, 28th annual Guardians of Hope uh, dinner, which is coming up next Friday, uh, March 5th. Uh, Mr. Bopp. Thanks, Charles, and good evening, everyone. Thanks for taking time out of your busy schedules to be with us. It is hard to believe, but next week we are already in March. So the school calendar is moving quickly. And once we get into March, believe me, March, April, and May turn into a blur. So, so wonderful that you're here tonight. There's a lot of exciting things going on at Holy Trinity, and we want to share those with you. But before we start, as we do every day at Holy Trinity, let's put ourselves in the presence of God as we pray. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. By the power of your holy cross, transform our hearts and minds, that in your name we may transform the world. Lord Christ, you came into the world as one of us and suffered as we do. As I go through the trials of life, help me to realize that you are with me at all times and in all things, that I have no secrets from you, and that your loving grace enfolds me for eternity to the security of your embrace, I pray. Please bless the Holy Trinity family, especially our students and parents, all our teachers and staff members, as well as those who believe in and support the Holy Trinity mission. In your name we pray, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So when we turn to March, the business and fundraising part of the building are extremely excited because the Guardians of Hope Gala is right upon us. Uh, the development team under the leadership of Casey Sassano has been working on this event for the past 10 months. And because of the pandemic, for the first time in the 28 year history of Guardians of Hope, it will be virtual. So what is this Guardians of Hope dinner? Well, it's an opportunity for all the different members of the Holy Trinity family to come together to celebrate the mission of our school. Faculty, staff, donors, board members, alumni, those people that have just an interest in seeing who the honorees for the evening are. Uh, normally, 
at Navy Pier, we draw between somewhere between five and 600 people to the event. This year, even though we won't be gathering together, we do have an interesting opportunity because it's going to be free live stream. So there may be people from out of town that have never been able to attend. There may be people that had other responsibilities and just can't get down to Navy Pier. So really this year provides us with an opportunity to reach out to a whole different group of people. And we're really excited about that. Why is Guardians of Hope so important? Well, for many reasons, but the chief reason is, is because the proceeds from the Guardians of Hope Gala really fund our financial assistance program. Uh, so the monies that Mr. Malloy and Mr. Swanson award to families so that they can afford to come to Holy Trinity come from this event. Last year, we broke all records and raised an amazing $1.3 million in gross revenue. When I say that number, it seems impossible but we were able to do it last year. So this year, we're excited about the opportunity to duplicate what we did last year. We're also very, very nervous because we know it's a different year. There's been a lot of things that have happened in our country, in our neighborhoods, in our city. Uh, and so we really don't know, but we believe in the generosity of people. So how can you help? Well, we would appreciate it if you would all be part of the evening by tuning in on Friday, March 5th at seven o'clock in the evening. I am sure that the senior students that have been selected to be part of the evening will steal the show. But I think it's important that all members of the Holy Trinity community see the outpouring of passion and affection and generosity for our mission that night. So next week, we will be sending out the link to the event. And we ask that you tune in and share it with others. In addition, there'll be a live chat option. So please feel free to get involved when you see things that you're excited about. And there will be posts as well. So we ask that you share those posts with your social media network. Everybody can help make this dinner a success. So we look forward to it. We hope you're part of the evening. Um, a Holy Trinity event is not really a Holy Trinity event unless all parts of the community join us. So please uh, be part of that event. Any questions that you have about the event, please feel free to send them my way or Casey Sasano's way. With that, I know there's a lot on the agenda, as Charles said. So back to you, Charles, to continue on with the agenda. All right. Well, thank you so much, Tim. Uh, we will, um, of course, uh, I, one thing that I forgot to mention is that um, I believe we will have um, a Q&A session. But as questions come up, um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you can feel free to ask those questions uh, via the uh, chat box or the Q&A box. Uh, and as we go along throughout the evening, we, we will, um, you know, pause to address those, uh, those questions. Um, next on the agenda, we do have uh, an athletics report. Uh, so at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Payton, who is going to talk to us about um, athletics here at Holy Trinity uh, for the spring. Yeah, just real briefly, not too much going on with athletics, other than the fact that we have started. And those of you parents who are on the call who have come to a game already. Thank you for supporting our boys and our girls with basketball. Right now, that is the only sport that we have going on, girls and boys basketball. And that will run through uh, mid-March, uh, to my knowledge. Uh, in mid-April, the week of April 12th through the 16th, all other sports, all other sports, girls softball, boys baseball, girls and boys track and field, boys and girls volleyball, and boys soccer will begin in mid-April and go through mid-June. So the only sport we have going on right now is basketball. Every other sport 
will start in mid-April. Uh, we are happy that our basketball teams are playing. Um, we are at this point for home games allowing anywhere between 30 and 35 uh, attendees for each game. That's boys and girls. In our gym, uh, we have the seats in the rafters are marked off where people can sit socially distanced and enjoy our game. All the games have been live streamed and have been placed on our YouTube uh, channel. And so if you would like to watch it live, instructions on how to do that and where that is will always come out the day of the game. Um, and that's pretty much it for athletics. Uh, one caveat to that that I'll talk about a little bit later is COVID-19 testing, not simply just for athletes, but for all students. Um, did, did we mention soccer? Oh, I'm sorry, girls soccer as well. Okay, because uh, that uh, 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 Rosa Salgado had that question. All sports, all sports, other than basketball. All right. Um, uh, next on the agenda, uh, we uh, have a course selection uh, update. Uh, our gu guidance counselors have been uh, hard at work uh, uh, helping students, assisting students with uh, course selections uh, for the next. Uh, school year. Uh, I believe, uh, Dr. Uh, Payton, you have, uh, you will have an update for that as well. Yes, our counselors couldn't make it here tonight, but they did give me a note to read for everyone. Uh, the counselors have been working and been having individual meetings with all HD students the past two weeks about course selection. These are the courses that your students are going to take next year. If your student missed the meeting, please have them contact their counselors to reschedule. So for freshmen and juniors, you will be rescheduling with Margaret Hogan. For sophomores and seniors, if you need to reschedule, that will be done with Kelly McMullen, if you are a sophomore and a senior. Uh, all course selection forms and override forms are due to the counselors by this Friday. Please feel free to contact the counselors directly if you have any questions. Um, this is very important because what happens is students will come back in the fall after their, their schedule has been set in the spring and will want almost a practically completely different schedule, or will want to replace classes that they are now confident about, but in August will have changed their minds. We are changing a few things with that. That causes a lot of issues with changing classes after the school year has begun. So students won't have a chance to do this, but parents, your involvement will take place too. After a certain date, in order to change your schedule, you will have to sign off on a form and pay $75 in order for your student to change their schedule. It's very important that we get the schedules right now. All right, so we wanna make sure that all of the kids know exactly what they wanna take. If they have missed their meeting with their counselor, that meeting needs to be rescheduled as soon as possible so we can get the most accurate classes for them, not only for the ones that they want, but the ones that they need to graduate. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Payton, for uh, that update. Um, as I've said before, if anyone has any questions, uh, you can feel free to put those in the Q&A box or in the chat box, um, and uh, we will uh, address those questions uh, as we go on. Um, we will now hear, uh, I will now turn it over to uh, uh, Mrs. Mahone, who's our assistant principal. Um, she's going to talk to us about uh, credit recovery. I know that that's something that always comes up at the end of the semester. She's going to walk us through what that process looks like. Hi, good afternoon, HT family. Um, 
So we're four weeks into our credit recovery program. Um, we started, I believe, January 25th of this year with the orientation, and we have a large number of students that need to make up credits uh, due to COVID and the pandemic. Uh, so we started earlier this year. Uh, usually it's, it starts over the summer. So we have um, a large number of students scheduled. Um, we're about four to five weeks into the program. Uh, the program lasts about 10 to 12 weeks. I've been sending emails today to uh, most of the students uh, just a reminder to log into their account. Uh, about half of the students have not logged in. Uh, so I, I will be contacting the parents as well uh, at some point this week, just to make sure the counselors and the principal have been notified for those students that have not logged in. Uh, those students that need to start, I will extend their 10 week time uh, and push it back so they have enough time to finish especially our seniors. Our seniors, it's uh, very imperative that they get those credits uh, made up so they can graduate on time. So you uh, just look out for an email from, from myself. Uh, you also may get an email from the counselors uh, for staffings. We've started staffings, uh, sending emails for invitations for next week. And a staffing is basically, uh, if a student is earning four or more Ds or Fs, uh, and they may have an additional credit recovery class. Uh, they will be meeting with the social, the counselor, myself, um, and a few teachers, um, mo the teachers that they're failing that course in. So please look out for those emails, uh, respond for those dates. Uh, we have several scheduled next week. And if there's any questions you can address, uh, you can speak with me uh, about either the report or the, D I'm sorry, the uh, credit recovery course. Again, we're here to help. Uh, if your student is struggling with a certain subject, we have a lot of resources. We have our resource learning center where Ms. Wallace can uh, schedule time for your child to uh, get the support that they need with a tutor. And we also have our APEX platform that students are using for credit recovery. And there's a uh, 24 hour online support. Uh, there's also live support during the day. Um, so there's, they have many opportunities to get the support as well as their teachers and myself. If you have any questions, you can please reach out to me. Um, but I, I'm hoping that we get all of our students on, on the program so they can complete and graduate on time. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Mahone, for that. Uh, I want to pause for a few seconds just to see uh, if anyone has any uh, uh, questions. Um, we do want, and again, uh, there will be uh, an opportunity toward the end of the program where we will have a more general Q and A. Um, so, again, I always reiterate this: if you have questions, you can put those in the Q and A or chat box. Um, and then we'll answer those questions um, uh, as we continue along with the program. Uh, if there aren't any questions, uh, we'll just keep going uh, in our agenda. Uh, we have our school dean, uh, Dr. Beneta Baker, who is here with us tonight. Uh, she's going to be talking to us about um, uh, our safety and security drill, which will be happening in the building next, I believe, Tuesday and Thursday. A more detailed note will go out about that uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, but Dr. Baker uh, is here tonight, and she's going to walk us through what that uh, whole process looks like. Good evening. Um, as you all know, safety, the safety of our students and the HT family is our number one priority. Um, so we will host our intruder drill on Tuesday, March the 2nd and Thursday, March the 4th. We have two days available so that both the blue and the gold cohort can participate in the intruder drill. Um, there's not a lot of requirements for the students aside of outside of being present. Um, we will work with Officer Edwards from Precinct 12 um, who will guide us through the intruder drill and so you will receive a memo if you have not already received that and if you have any questions or concerns regarding that feel free to send me an email or give me a call and that's all i have charles okay well thank you so much uh, uh dr baker um as we said um uh, uh no need to worry uh there will be we do have a scheduled, um, a more detailed uh, email about 
the safety and security drill um, that will go out uh, uh, tomorrow to uh, all parents uh, as well as students, uh, just so uh, everybody is aware and everybody's on the same page um, uh, regarding those uh, safety and practice drills. And there's also, there will also be instructions in there on what um, uh, e-learning students uh, should do uh, when that drill takes place. Uh, it will take place, I believe, during sixth uh, period. Uh, so there will be some instruction in there on what uh, our students that are 100% e-learning will uh, need to do um, uh, because they're at home. Uh, so that message will be going out tomorrow morning. Thank you, Charles. Yep. Any any questions? Uh, we'll you know, pause for a few seconds. If not, um, again, you know, put those questions in the Q and A uh, in the chat box. Um, I know a lot of uh, many uh, folks uh, from uh, our community, um, you know, have questions about uh, Schoology and how it works, and you know. You know, technology around it. Uh, we have uh, with us tonight our Director of Technology, uh, Mr. Uh, Jonathan Tarasi, um, who is going to talk uh, a, a little bit about Schoology um, and just uh, answering questions uh, and uh, issues that have come up around uh, that platform. Uh, Mr. Tarasi, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. So I wanted to briefly address Schoology. Um, as you know, it is the way that we assign most of our assignments. It's the way that we, um, it's the tool that we use most often and most, uh, most, uh, you know, most of the time to um, deliver the work, especially during the pandemic. And it also is the way that uh, you are able to check up on how your uh, students are doing. So what's great about Schoology is that built into it, there is a student level account where they can receive work from their teachers. And there's also a parent level account um, some of you may have noticed uh, a week or two ago that I sent out emails with instructions on how to sign up for Schoology. Uh, I got some questions back on that. So the first thing I want to say in regard to that is if you already have a parent account and you have it set up as you want it, you don't need to do anything further. So I know some of you weren't sure if there was any more process involved in that. If you have an account and it's set up, then you don't need to take any further action. Just please remember to log in and check, you know, frequently on that. For those of you who haven't signed up for Schoology yet, that set of instructions that you received in that email should tell you how to set up an account on your own. So basically, you're able to go to Schoology.com, and there's an area in the upper right where you can select the option to create an account for the first time. When you do that, you input your name and email and password, like I'm sure you're used to by now. But in addition to all that, you need a student code. That is the main element that, uh, that I wanted to send to parents in those emails that you received. So in the middle of those instructions, those instructions are customized with the code for your particular student. If you have multiple students enrolled, you should have received multiple emails and the instructions are identical except for the code, which is, um, I tried to set it out so that it's very easy to find in the document. So, if you haven't signed up for Schoology, if you don't have an account at all, please follow those instructions and use the code that's provided. And you should be able to not only create an account, but have your account start out paired with your student. And what you do at that point is you go to the upper right, there should be a, an icon uh, for your avatar and your name. If you click on that, you will see a drop down menu and you'll see your child there where you can click on on their name, and you can immediately access Schoology from their point of view. So you're able to see the assignments they have assigned, any assignments that are past due, their grades, um, I believe groups they're, they're involved in as well. So, um, and additionally, if you go back to your account, you can configure your account to send weekly updates. So I believe it's usually Fridays, Friday uh, in the early evening, it will send you just a quick summary of where grades are. And Schoology is the best way to stay on top of what grades your student is receiving, because that's exactly where the teachers will input those grades. So if you ever want to check up, you don't have to wait for progress reports to come out. You can do that. I know that um, there are always some technical limitations. Um, occasionally, we will run into situations where um, Schoology accounts are such that you, it's hard for you to, to sign up, or there might be an error 
in signing up. At that point, please do contact me and I can set you up an account. So as a fallback, regardless of, of whether you, you know, are able to get the instructions to work or not, I'm able to create an account and link you with your student. So if you ever need that, um, please feel free to call me or email me at my email address and Mr. Jefferson can provide those in the chat. But um, I'm able to very quickly and easily put together an account for you. So that's all that I have as an update. Okay, thank you, Mr. Tarasi. And I will be sure to put um, uh, your uh, uh, name and email uh, in the chat just so everybody uh, has your email and contact information um, uh, so they can reach out if they have any uh, issues. Um, any questions uh, for Mr. Tarasi? Okay, well, we will have an opportunity uh, at the uh, toward the end of our program um, uh, to address any questions that any uh, uh, parents, any of you might have. Um, before I give it back to uh, Dr. Payton, uh, I do want to uh, give uh, uh, Mr. Malloy, our Chief Operating Officer, an opportunity to provide us an update with uh, our food service program, uh, tuition, or uh, any uh, uh, updates uh, from your department, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Malloy. Thank you, Mr. Jefferson. Uh, so we continue to operate under the more relaxed rules of the uh, school food service program, given the uh, constraints of the pandemic. So we do encourage that all students who are attending Holy Trinity in person take advantage of the free meals that are available to any Holy Trinity student for breakfast or lunch. Uh, we encourage you to uh, make sure your student is making the most of that opportunity. Uh, our food service provider, Country House, is doing a great job of providing a variety of options that all meet the nutritional guidance requirements. Additionally, we are offering pickup options for families who uh, are not in school on a regular basis and e-learning from home. So you can pick up those meals after school on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Or in a regular school week, you can pick up a week's worth of meals in one stop, and that's on Tuesday mornings between 8 and 9 a.m. So it's uh, through the food service program. With respect to tuition uh, and other business matters, uh, we're starting to plan ahead for next year. And in the next couple of weeks, you'll start to receive information for us about the registration process for the 2021-2022 school year. Uh, there will be uh, a couple of forms that you need to fill out to make sure that uh, your information is up to date, as well as a registration fee to save your spot at Holy Trinity for the next school year. Given that uh, many of our students are not coming to school in person, and families may not have printers at home, we'll be working to make those forms available in electronic format uh, to help make the process easier for everybody. But we do ask for your help uh, to get those registration materials in on time. Uh, that helps us to plan for next school year. The general time frame for those is typically, they're sent out in early March and do in the middle of April. We kind of use tax day as a guideline because as you're applying for financial aid, uh, you need to get your uh, financial information in order, uh, which the federal government you know, expects you to do by April 15th. So if you are doing it for the government, that hopefully means that it won't be much extra work for you to share that information with Holy Trinity as you apply for financial aid. So please be on the lookout for information about registering for the coming school year. That is more of a uh, I would say financial transaction. It's separate from the course selection process. They're both equally important. Course selection is more of an academic process of picking your courses for the coming school year. The registration process is more of a financial commitment that you will be back at Holy Trinity. But both are critical to uh, us all being prepared for next school year. 
So that's it from the business office for now, Mr. Jefferson. Thank you, Ms. Malloy, for that update. I appreciate it. Uh, any questions? Again, if you have uh, uh, if you have more uh, specific questions, I'll put Mr. Malloy's email uh, in the chat. Uh, that way, you can email him directly, um, and then we will have an opportunity coming up uh, at the end uh, to address any questions. Um, Picture day is coming up. Uh, and we have a lot of fun uh, spring activities planned um, uh, that we're very excited about and that we are in the middle of, of planning to be sure um, that even in the midst of COVID-19 that we can still provide uh, the best opportunities and experiences possible for our students. So uh, Dr. Payton is going to come back and he is going to talk to us about um, picture day as well as um, spring activities that are coming up in the building. Thank you, Charles. Uh, just first, I want to apologize because I know there have been some changes in, in, into our calendar over the last couple of weeks. Uh, you guys are going to hear about another change uh, in a moment uh, as we are going to repeat what we're doing this week with Workday Wednesday going to Workday Friday. We are going to also do that next week. Uh, our faculty have a a retreat that's uh, being given by the Archdiocese that will happen on Friday. So we need to move Workday Wednesday to Workday Friday, not only this week, but also next week, the week of March 1st to the 5th. So you guys will be getting, getting an email about that tomorrow morning uh, in case there's any questions or you know we don't want anybody to forget but Workday Wednesday next week will be Workday Friday. Um, Charles mentioned picture day. Tomorrow is our first picture day for the gold cohort. Many of you, a lot of you have been asking about picture day over the last couple of weeks. I'm so happy that our parents and students are excited about picture day. Uh, it is somewhat of a break of the monotony of what we normally do every week and every day. So if you are in the gold cohort who will be here tomorrow, you will go to room 102 for your pictures during your English class. So for example, if you got English first period, you will be taking your pictures first period. Those of you who are seniors, Yes, you will also be taking your pictures if you're in the gold cohort tomorrow. We will have caps and gowns that we will sanitize before each picture is taken. So the gold cohort will go picture day tomorrow. For the blue cohort, we had to reschedule that day because we also had something going on this week. The blue cohort picture day will be Monday March 1st. That will be this coming Monday, March 1st. And it will be the same regimen on March 1st, on so Monday. In your English class, you will come downstairs with your teacher and you will go in room 102 and take your picture for the yearbook. Those of you who have not yet received a yearbook from last year, We've had a lot of parents ask about that. If that's you, you have two ways to pick up your yearbook. The first is very simple. You can simply just email our yearbook manager, which is Mr. Thomas Rail, and we'll get Thomas's uh, email up in the chat. And you can arrange an appointment to meet with him and pick up your student's yearbook. The second way to pick up a student yearbook from last year is to come to the school on Thursday, March 18th. That is the e-learning picture day. That picture day will go on all day between eight and three o'clock during our spring break. If you know your student is going somewhere or traveling for spring break, or for whatever reason, 
will not be able to take their pictures on that day and they are e-learning, please let us know and we can hopefully arrange another date where they can take their picture. However, we're hoping that each of you can do that because spring break, we don't have class. Uh, we won't have students or the, the normal traditional student day. We're hoping you guys can come in March 18th and get your picture taken. For sophomores, as you guys know, we've already had the freshman retreat. The sophomore retreat will be Wednesday, March 10th, March 10th. 10th, and that will be from nine to three o'clock in the afternoon. It will be only the sophomores in the building and they'll have the run of the place. Our freshman retreat was very successful and we are aiming to make sure that the sophomore retreat is just, if not more successful. So March 10th from nine to three for our sophomore retreat. Tomorrow, we also will have the first day of COVID-19 testing in the building. We are actually already all set up for this now. I met with Free COVID Care, which is the agency that will be delivering our COVID testing. I met with them today and we set up the room 102. This will begin tomorrow after school from three to four. So if you have already signed your authorization form and you have submitted it to free COVID care, the only thing that you have to do now is that if your student is getting tested tomorrow, just make sure they bring their student ID or a state ID or driver's license. Any ID would work. The test is self-administered. Although representatives from free COVID care will be here, your student will be administering their own test. They will take it back to their lab and will inform you if whether or not your student has tested positive for COVID-19. They also will inform us and we will make sure that your student will quarantine for the next 10 days after tomorrow so that they can recover from the virus. Hey, Dr. Payton, we have a, a couple of questions about a picture day uh, that I want to get answered before we uh, move on. Uh, the first question is, is that if students uh, have gym, can they wear their gym uniforms or do they need to wear their regular uniforms for picture day? All students will wear their regular uniform for picture day. And the second question uh, for March 18 pictures, will we need to schedule a time? No, that information will be coming to you. It will be regimented. So for instance, and we haven't quite decided this yet, but let's say the between eight and 10, it'll be freshmen. From 10 to 12, it'll be sophomores, so forth and so on. <clears throat> that information will be coming to you. Uh, another question is, uh, regarding the, uh, the self-administered COVID test. Is it a nasal or oral swab? Both. Okay. okay. The last thing I have is meet the teacher. You guys did this last semester and it served as our parent teacher conference time. Parent teacher conferences will start Wednesday, March 10th, the same day as the sophomore retreat. We will begin at 10 and we will go till 7 p.m. In addition to that, the next day, March 11th, that Thursday, we will also have meet the teacher conferences beginning at 3.30 and also going to seven o'clock. More information about that will be coming out, but it will run exactly how we did it in the fall. Uh, parents can sign up 
with their students' teachers and set up parent-teacher conferences with them. Each conference is limited to 10 minutes. And that's all I have, Charles. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Payton. Uh, I believe we have reached the end of our program. Um, I think that's all we have on the agenda. Uh, do want to open it up and give the, the opportunity um, for anybody who has uh, any questions that they want to ask, please feel free to ask those at this time. Um, I also want to go ahead and acknowledge um, uh, one of our counselors who has uh, joined us, uh, Ms. Kelly McMullen, uh, who was the uh, counselor for the sophomores and the seniors um, uh, who uh, was able to join us. Uh, good evening, uh, Ms. McMullen, thank you uh, so much. Uh, I don't know if there's anything that uh, you want, I, I believe Dr. Payton had already talked about uh, the course selection update. Um, and I don't know if there's anything else that you may want to add or, or follow up with. Nope, the only thing is uh, just make sure that course registration forms are turned in by Friday. Okay. Thank you. Um, any questions? Now this, this is the time to uh, ask uh, questions. Uh, you have uh, our principal, assistant principal, our uh, school dean, um, our director of technology, our school president. Um, we have one of our uh, uh, school counselors here. Uh, so if there are any questions that you have, uh, please feel free uh, to ask them now. Um, if there aren't any questions, um, uh, hold on. Uh, do the seniors uh, take pictures in caps and gowns only? Yes. Okay. Uh, any other any other questions? Regarding picture day, um, everyone should have uh, received an email about uh, uh, details about picture day as well as how to uh, order pictures um, uh, via LifeTouch, who is the company that we contract with to actually come in and do the pic, uh, and, uh, uh, take the pictures. Um, so uh, you, everyone should have received that. That is also posted in our uh, Parents of Holy Trinity Facebook group with the flyer with that information on how to actually place your order for pictures uh, online. Uh, we have a couple of questions that are coming in via the Q&A box. Um, someone is asking, Stephen is asking, can parents take the COVID test too? Yes, you can. Parents, if you're interested in getting tested for COVID, you simply just need to fill out the authorization form that was sent to you, bring in a ID, and you can come in and get tested. Uh, this question uh, is about Guardians of Hope. So, uh, Mr. Bob, hopefully uh, you can maybe answer this. Um, when will the baskets be online to bid for uh, Guardians of Hope? That's a great question. I believe uh, Friday morning, March 5th, is when they'll be on display to start the bidding process. So the Friday of Guardians of Hope is when those will go live. Correct. Okay. Oh, Charles, they got a correction. It's Tuesday, sorry, March 2nd. Tuesday, March 2nd, they'll start to go uh, live for the auction for the Tuesday, baskets. Tuesday, March 2nd is when those uh, uh, baskets will go live uh, for Guardians of Hope. Um, Dorothy says, I was unable to sign in for a conference in the fall. Um, I had troubles, it wouldn't let me sign in. It wouldn't let me sign a time. That's what she's asking. 
uh, I guess the, the system was giving her trouble. So just make sure to get in touch with me so that I can add you and make sure that you have an account. So if for any reason it's denying you access, it's most likely that your account isn't set up with us in advance. We have to um, pull records from our database and enter them into another database. And sometimes things get lost along the way. Um, also, if your contact info has changed. So a lot of people that I emailed out for the Schoology directions, we had um, contact info on file that was um, an invalid email address. So it may be that we have a wrong email address for you, but if you get in touch with me um, with the contact info that Mr. Jefferson has shared, I'm able to add you to the system and that way you can um, begin selecting times. There is, um, depending, we'll have to look at this. We might have to limit the number of slots, but I believe we should allow everyone to see all teachers that they would like to see. So there shouldn't be any limits on um, the number of slots you can have. However, we are gonna close the sign up maybe 24 hours in advance of the conferences so that teachers can have a reasonable a heads up on when their schedule is. We don't want schedules for them changing at the very last minute. So um, if you do have a last minute request, you can try reaching out to the teachers and they'll be able to schedule you manually, but the, there will be a closing date and time and it will, it's set for 24 hours before the first conference starts. Donovan, will it be possible to send out maybe some step-by-step -step instructions for parents prior to March 10th? Yes, so I had some instru instructions from last time. I've um, revised them and added some more clarity to them. So those will be available soon. And we can send those out via email and we can also post them to um, our website, which is what we did for the fall. So we have those in both places. So we, yes, we will definitely uh, get those instructions out so uh, people can uh, uh, sign up for uh, uh, parent-teacher conferences. Uh, thank you. Uh, we, uh, uh, th this isn't a question, but this is a, more of a, a statement uh, about Guardians of Hope. Jenny says, uh, I had an amazing time last year, Guardians of Hope. I can't wait to see HT pass last year's numbers. And Jenny, we can't wait either. That's the kind of optimism we need. Thank you, that's great. Yes. I think um, I think um, our uh, VP of Advancement, uh, Casey Sassano, is I believe, tuning in uh, via attendees, and I'm sure she uh, shares uh, those same sentiments. Uh, we can't wait either uh, to surpass those numbers. Uh, so thank you, thank you, Jenny. Um, uh, Toya Young says, "Where can I find the student handbook to uh, know requirements for graduation?" Um, I believe the student handbook is on our website. Um, I will link uh, to the student handbook. I will go to the website and put that link in the chat box um, just so you can go directly to um, the student handbook. You are welcome. Uh, any other questions? Any other questions? Looking at the uh, chat box and as well as the Q&A box, I think we uh, answered all of those that have come in. Um, I'll wait a few more seconds. Thank you all so much for uh, uh, attending and taking the time out. Um, I think we've done uh, six or seven of these uh, uh, thus far this school year. Um, and so we definitely uh, appreciate you all uh, taking the time out of your schedules uh, to come and be here with us in this virtual space uh, that we can talk about all things Holy Trinity uh, uh, and all the great things that are happening here and uh, as well as um, how you all can be involved even in this uh, uh, era of uh, virtual uh, virtual events. Um, I, I don't see any other questions um, via either the uh, Q&A box or uh, the chat. 
Uh, so I'm going to turn it over to uh, Dr. Payton and uh, Mr. Bob um, to sort of close this out and offer any closing remarks. Well, I'd just like to thank everybody for coming. Um, our year is winding down. We got about 90 days and we'll be talking more about what school is gonna look like in the fall. Yeah, thanks everyone. Guardians of hope, guardians of hope, guardians of hope. Join us, be part of the excitement and make sure that everybody in your sphere, your network knows about it. That would be the best thing you can do for us. Thank you. Have a great evening. And thanks for joining us. All right. Thank you guys so much. Uh, this uh, uh, recording will be available on our YouTube channel uh, by the end of the week. Uh, so uh, again, thank you all so much and uh, have a good night.